Before we begin the video, if you haven't yet, come on down and join my Discord server. Link is down in the description. 2020 has finally come to an end, and as I always do, my final upload of the year will be a year in review. Today, we're going to take a look at what we've accomplished this year and what comes next for 2021. Hey guys, welcome back for my final video of 2020. If you guys have been with me for a few years or so, you know how these work. Basically, I just split these videos up into various segments, usually discussing stuff about the channel or community. And we will still do all of that, but since this has been such a bizarre year, I also want to start off with a segment just debriefing what happened this year and how I feel about 2020 as a whole. So I hope you guys enjoyed this year in review, and let's get started. So we started off this crazy year with internet users fearing or memeing that Iran and the USA would start World War III. Obviously this didn't happen, and thank god it didn't, but I gotta say the memes actually weren't that bad. Then there were the Australia fires, and also I believe there were fires in the USA a few months later. And obviously the biggest thing this year was the pandemic, and this influenced everyone no matter where you live. Contrary to what some of us may have hoped or predicted, it's still very much going on and it'll continue to dominate next year as well and who knows, maybe even the year after. Events of police brutality sparked worldwide protesting and activism and this happened in the summer. Also in the US, there was still an election this year and that's always a big thing. And lastly, probably the only objectively good thing to happen was there are vaccines and probably these will be rolled out more next year. We also lost a lot of legends this year, such as Kobe, Chadwick Boseman, RBG, Alex Trebek, and most relevant to us, the voice actor of Cole, the fantastic Kirby Morrow. If you had to describe 2020 in one image, I, I think this is it. Uh, yeah, this was a dumpster fire of a year. For a lot of people, this was a very difficult year, a very tragic year. I think for me personally, it was more of a weird year. Uh, just historically, we haven't had a year like this in a long time. My favorite month probably was November because that's when we hit 10k, and also for another reason that some of you probably know. Least favorite? I don't know, maybe April. So overall, 2020 was pretty bad, and I think we all can agree on that. So first off, let's discuss the logo. So for most of this year, we used the same one as last year the classic pink and blue colors. And then when we hit 10K, I switched over to this redesign logo. And this one I think is definitely a lot better. And I definitely plan on using this for the foreseeable future. Let's take a look at some numbers now. We started out this year at 4.1 thousand subscribers. And it really feels like such a long time ago. And here we are closing off this year at 12.1 thousand subscribers. This year we gained over 8,000 subscribers. And that is over double the amount that we had last year, so I just want to say thank you so much. This year we also broke the record for most subscribers gained in one day, over 150 on November 20th. Unfortunately, the reason this happened was because of my video about Kirby Morrow, and I would have much rather hit this occasion on a different circumstance. Here are the top 5 viewed videos on my channel, and this year my most viewed video became How Old Are Ninjago Characters Part 1, and part two following in second place. Interestingly enough, all of these are 2019 videos, but if you look at the sixth one, every time the ninja turned evil, that is the most viewed video posted this year and sixth overall. While we didn't have any massive hits this year, the videos from last year are still growing, which is perfectly fine with me. This was by far the best year I've had for the channel, especially because I got my number one goal of 10,000 subscribers. So again, I wanna say thank you so much. If we keep this rate up, we are on track for 20,000 next year, and I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Anyways, now I want to talk more about the actual content I made this year. So this year, really just more of the same. You know, reviews and coverage while seasons are airing, and between then, just general Ninjago videos. Whereas last year was more about refining the content, this year we found something that worked and I did more of it. So I don't think the difference between let's say season 12 reviews and season 13 reviews will be too big. For example, we don't get any closure for Scott. Scott has been trapped in Prime Empire for likely the majority of his life, and there definitely should have been a scene where he reunites with Dyer. So this is a clip from April, let's now take a look at a more recent review. 
Paul may not change much in this season, but that's okay. What we got was amazing. And I would say this is Cole's best role in the series along with season eight. So content wise, largely the same stuff. But around July, people started to ask me if I was sick. I've had at least 30 people ask me this and not just you guys. My friends asked me, my mom asked me. And uh, honestly, I find this all to be really funny. I've not been sick this year. When I'm sick, I usually don't record. I think it's just the way I sound when I record. I don't sound like this on live streams or in real life. And actually, I understand why people ask this. When I look at some of the older stuff, I do sound kind of off. I don't really know what to say to you guys. I guess I do sound sick here and there. This year, we also did Mandalorian reviews, just like last year. Their relationship is one of the strongest parts of the show, and the way it's developed throughout the series is really focused on here. Mando takes off his helmet again, and the acting is quite good here. So yeah, these are the same as they were last year. I still script these. Yeah, these are some of the only videos I script on this channel. This year was also the end of episode predictions. After doing those with season 12's bizarre schedule, I figured it would be best not to do those going ahead. Also, of course, I did set reviews and streams, especially the summer I really tried to maximize on those set building streams. This year, I didn't really have any channel series. Last year, I did face off. The year before was retrospect reviews. But next year, we'll be doing Ninjago's 10 year journey just in a few weeks. And then after that, I plan on doing a brand new series, and we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Also, collaborations. Last year, I barely did any, so my New Year's resolution was to do more. Here's a rundown of the collaborations we did this year. In total, we did seven on this channel, which I'm really happy about, but also a few on other channels. Next year, I'd also like to do this amount of collaborations, have some of these people back on for more, and also some new faces. As for some other 2021 goals and plans, So in six days is going to be my 10th anniversary project, Ninjago's 10 year journey. It's going to be eight parts. It's gonna have video clips. Every part will premiere at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Overall, it's gonna be different from the content I normally make. And here is a bit of a teaser from the first part. And in so many ways, the pilot set the precedence for what the series continues to be today. It established that Jago should be a blend of technology, traditional, and fantasy influences. For the story, it left a cliffhanger by featuring Garbodon's escape from the underworld. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that and hope to see you next Wednesday. Now, I also mentioned my desire to start a new channel series. And basically, I want to do more Ninjago analysis videos. I want to start an analysis series similar to 10 Year Journey in terms of style, such as video clips and scripts, and basically analyzing various aspects of episodes and fights. In the past, I felt like, you know, a lot of people make news videos, but we don't really have a lot of analysis videos. At times last year, I definitely recall feeling like, you know what, I want to make more of these. But aside from two videos, maybe I never really did more than that. I figure if we could do them monthly, that would be great. So yeah, hopefully we get this started around February or so. And the last goal I want to talk about is subscribers. As I said, if we keep up this year's rate, we will get 20,000 next year. I think it's actually very possible that happens. However, I don't want to take this year's growth for granted. So my goal for next year is to get at least 18,000. And, you know, I definitely think we have a good chance at 20,000. I just don't want to assume that next year will be as good as this year. As for some other resolutions, more streams. Every set that I get, I think it would be great if we could stream it. Also, maybe another daily upload summer. Last year we did this, this year we did not. I think we definitely could try it again. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to roll out my plans for next year. Uh, we'll see how many of these I stay committed to. Last but not least, let's discuss the community. I think all in all, especially compared to last year, this was for the community a fairly normal year. And by normal, there was still a lot of toxicity and fighting and drama, you know, fans losing their minds over Just Stop's Ninjago rant, and also the sad fan drama on Twitter, and hard to believe, but all of this is normal, which I guess shows that the community as a whole just isn't great, but my outlook is, at least it wasn't as bad as last year. Last year you had two back-to-back -back dislike seasons, so of course, and plenty of people raging at the writers. I feel like why things were better this year, I largely attribute to the fact that there were two liked seasons of Ninjago. It was really nice to see a sense of unity and most people liking these seasons. In general, you know, YouTube, Twitter, things got better this year, 
But there was one sector of the community where I felt things got worse, and that would be Discord. There was a lot more toxicity and immaturity, at least in the servers that I'm on. In the past two years, I had a lot of fun talking on these Discord servers, but I can't say the same this year. But hey, you win some, you lose some. Overall, this was a great third year for me here on YouTube and the community. First off, I want to start by thanking my logo designer, or as, I, or as he would say, my server avatar designer. Seriously, the new design and especially the banner is so insane. And I also really appreciate your help on Ninjago Discord with the logos. My thanks also goes out to the members of the RGC at the basement. You guys all are great friends and you make Discord more bearable or better. Also shout out to the guy who drew my logo, Booty Resurrected, because he's pretty awesome. And finally, thank you to you, the viewer. Whether this is the first video you're watching or you've been with me since the start, your help in any way is really appreciated. And it is with that that my third year on YouTube comes to a close. Thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed. As I always say, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone and everyone you know. I wish you all the best in 2021 and I hope you have a fantastic new year.